to Libre Program in Audencia Business School in France. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to the info session today. And I'm very honored to be here. Um, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I never imagined that uh, five years ago um, I was here, same as you guys, uh, listening to the info session. But today I'm here uh, to uh, have the chance to share, it, uh, share it with you that uh, my two years uh, wonderful journey. Um, so today, um, I'm thinking about that, uh, why me? Yes, everything happened for a reason, right? And um, I'm not the best performing student, I'm not the smartest, I'm not the most successful person in my batch. But why me today, uh, sharing, to, uh, sharing here? So I keep asking these kind of questions. And uh, one thing I think about is maybe I have high visibility because I always participate after graduate, like in the badminton club and uh, hiking club um, that was founded by our uh, alumni. So we have like strong connection uh, in our batch. Like even after we graduate, we still have bonding with each other. And um, <clears throat> okay, so just kidding, like uh, because. High visibility uh, in, in the office world and in the real world is also important, right? Either you are very successful or you are high visibility that everyone remember you, right? So this is also the key um, that make you, like, people remember you. But I think, like, everyone here, you also want to hear something, like, really juicy, right? So I want to give you um, a bit uh, what you want to hear. Like, do you know that when you evaluate a really good MBA, what kind of metrics or criteria do you think? Is anyone that wants to raise your hand, or maybe share a bit? Like, what are you looking for when you choose a really good MBA? Anyone want to try? <clears throat> okay, so everyone still know awake, right? <laughs> okay, so one of the metrics that like FT Financial Times, and they do every year. How, how did they come up with the ranking? You may be curious, right? Because the most of the people um, is like after graduate, we measure about the before and after salary growth, right? This is like a true factor that not really like uh, we do just share. But uh, looking back, uh, before I joining MBA and till now, my uh, yearly and annual salary like double growth. So is that a true factor that uh, what a student like really seeing that is this MBA a good school that I want to join because we have these kind of factors that you can measure about. Okay, so next. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about my uh, profile. Um, oh, there is uh, some animation that didn't come out, but uh, okay. So I have like around 10 years of sales and business development in different industries. And currently, I work in a cybersecurity U.S. company, uh, fully remote. My company was backed by Intel, Google, and uh, the Core Capital. So it's in the pre-IPO stage. It's very rewarding. Um, I'm happy to join that. And before that, uh, I went. Uh, I work in a company. It's also a in uh, Taiwan. And I work in the software uh, uh, department uh, as an ERP sales. And before that, uh, during 18, 2018 and 2020, I uh, joined the IMBA, and I also went to France Audencia, uh, the dual degree school that previously uh, Richard mentioned. Um, and okay, so there's a, like three different. Uh, didn't show up the image here, but um, I would say three fun fact about me. Uh, I have a Shiba in Kaohsiung, uh, Shiba Inu Tai Chen. Okay, and also I'm a big fan of podcast. So uh, this year I have an honor to join a podcast channel. Uh, conversation with uh, probably you probably you know that Da Lin Xue. Uh, we have a, a interesting conversation talking about business and relationship, different perspectives. And um, yeah, and MBTI. My MBTI is ENFP. So I'm kind of like outgoing person. <laughs> okay. And today's agenda is about three things I want to share with you guys. Why is this IMBA? And three things I learned from here. And then the words for the new entry, the future leader. Okay. 
So looking back, why NCC UIMBA? This is most of the uh, most of why you are here, right? Um, okay. Stephen Covey in her uh, in his book Seven Habits of the Highly Effective People. The first thing he mentioned is begin with the end in mind. The most important thing you are <clears throat> you will think about applying for MBA is just do the goal setting. So thinking about not just because oh MBA sounds fancy because you you go to uh, networking with the successful uh, C levels. It's not about that. It's not because your peers uh, they go to MBA, so that's why you want. So thinking about your own reason. And looking back five years ago, I was working in a Taiwanese company. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, stuck in the middle. I'm thinking um, to look at the back of my manager. Do I really want this kind of job, like doing the routine, um, working till retirement, this kind of merdan? So this is what I keep thinking. And to reflect myself, I'm kind of like a growth mindset person. I don't want myself to be stuck in the same place, not growing every day. So I want to really seek an international environment that can help me to discover myself, uh, for, unleash my potential. So that's why I am start thinking about, maybe I, I should do something to change myself. And how can I do that? At that time, my good friend, um, she was currently working in IBM consultant. She went to IBA uh, before me, and we also went to the same French uh, business school at the time. And uh, she shared with me that she applied for their school, and they have this kind of dual degree program. And that kept caught my eyes because I always have a dream to study and work abroad. Um, also, I think, I, sorry, I, I think. Sorry, too nervous. <laughs> so I'm thinking that that may be a good opportunity for me to switch my career. And actually, uh, during my university, I study in Chinese literature. So actually, it's a totally different than business background. Um, so I think this will be a, a very solid uh, business training for me. And so why NCCU IMBA? Uh, Professor Tsai also mentioned about we are the first English taught program. So we have a highly prestigious um, teachers, professors, and you have so many to learn from your peers. Uh, also, um, I think the most advantage that is because we, we are partnering with the top business school that I also went to uh, French Valencia. Okay, and the rich alumni network. Uh, today we have uh, Yan Lan, uh, he's also our alumni president here. Um, he shared with us that in Shanghai we have alumni network events and coming for like hundreds, right? Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> if you guys like joining this kind of program, we have really strong connection with our alumni. Okay, three key learning I've learned from IMBA. Um, so first thing that I think is to know yourself better. Um, so stick with your goals. Uh, remember the previous slide I say, uh, you need to do the goal setting first. What's your personal plan? You want to learn from these two years. Maybe it's a career advancement. Maybe it's a career switching. Or maybe it's your own leadership development, right? So to stick your plan and then you you list down what's your strategy to achieve your goals. <clears throat> uh, the second one is maximize your strength instead of focusing on your shortcoming. That's the thing I learned from sales because I always work dealing with people. I know that many people, uh, everyone, every leader, they have their own strength and their shortcoming. But most of people they neglect that they always want to improve their self to um, modify the, the shortcoming. But I, I would say the most effective thing is that here you become, here you are training to be a future leader. The thing is that leaders don't need to be the best person, but you know how to leverage your resources. You have your team. So it's like about who You make your team um, as a different strength inside your team. And here the training to tell you that how do you co collaborate with your team to achieve your goal. So problem solving in real life, ACA, Crow Business School. 
So that everyone here, I would say, like during the MBA two two years, it's not a very easy job because in the day, most of the Taiwanese you need to work at daytime, and you you are here. It's tiring uh, after, but you you learn with your peers, and you kind of like doing the uh, doing different school project with uh, with your your teammates, and that will help you to uh, really come up with the problem solving things that you can really apply in your daily. Okay, so second thing is networking. Um, I just mentioned like we have a student council, the president here, we have many regular events, and even this uh, afternoon we have family day, and this kind of events help people to connect each other very well. Um, also, we have alumni network around the world. Um, okay, uh, I want to mention one thing that after I graduated from French Business School, we also have audiences, uh there, like in the Taipei. We have a networking event this year, so I actually joined in Taipei that meet with some French alumni. So I think this kind of network really help people. Uh, even graduating, you are you're still connecting. And we have leadership camp after you employing in the program. We have the leadership camp, a volunteer job, and also uh, Richard sharing about his company have internship opportunity. So this kind of thing that can help you to really uh, discover your interest. Um, we have mentors and uh, different pro uh, professors. So the thing I want to mention is that exercise is most importantly to set up your comfort zone. Okay, the third things I want to mention is global view. I was studying in dual degree during 2019 and 2020. And I, why I choose friends? I think like it, from my inner side, um, I'm Pisces, like strong, so a bit romantic, you know. <laughs> so I want to choose like European more than uh, US. And I think it's because of the artist, uh, artist art and about uh, rich culture and history that really uh, attract me to discover Europe in general. And why friends? At the time, I think in my batch, like you, are, you guys are really lucky because the partner school is getting bigger and larger. So you have multiple choice. At the time, I think we only have uh, France and Germany uh, in Europe, and now we have Vienna. So um, that time, I think I choose France because they also have a very uh, good, like called Gonleco, that kind of big school student, uh, big school uh, kind of system that is also very prestigious, um, but not really Taiwanese know about about the French education system. That's a pity, and I think I choose, and I feel like it's a very uh, rewarding choice that I never regret because I have the opportunity to know about a, a French mindset, or you say. Um, it's very diverse because I, I think in US MBA, most of the uh, students coming from maybe Chinese or US, it's not that diverse. But uh, like when you choose a European school, it's, uh, my, my classmate coming from uh, like Latin America, also Africa, and every, every continent. So I think it's more diverse. And okay, I want to share one thing. Um, you, do you know that, uh, okay, I prepared some gifts to <laughs> maybe like more interactive, okay? <laughs> so, um, okay, guess one thing. Um, do you think like US people and European, if you want to say uh, what kind of fruit, a peach and a coconut, which one do you think is more Europe, European or US people? Can someone just guess? It's just a two and <laughs> one, two, one. Please. Please. Coconut is not where? Coconut is for US people. And why? Location. Sorry? Location? Yeah. Location. A more, more passion. A more passion. Okay. Um, so actually, the answer is um, coconut is uh, you say U.S. people, right? Yeah. Uh, it's opposite because European think that they are like really hard to get at the first time, so it's 
a heart outside, but sauce inside. <laughs> okay, this is the, the, from the, my culture uh, professor in France, but just a metaphor. So this is kind of like a, a like different kind of mentality. And I think the biggest learning from my side is that as now like, I'm working with uh, different culture people in my current U.S. company, um, we need to like uh, collaboration in uh, different kind of areas. And if you know this kind of culture difference, you know how to uh, talk in different communication ways. And it's like uh, the international mindset, if you didn't like put in yourself inside that kind of culture, you can hardly to get really understand that kind of mentality. So this is the biggest learning, I think. And the European say loving my mentality, uh, it's like before I, I go to France, um, I feel like many people think about France is like croissant, Eiffel Tower, this kind of cliche, Emily in Paris, like fancy, romantic, but actually uh, when you really live there, like open a bank account instead of taking you two or three months, um, this kind of efficiency. So I feel like uh, c'est la vie is like this kind of, you need to relax, okay? We are not in Taiwan, we are not really high efficient everywhere, 7-Eleven, okay? We just, um, chill, like, and chill, just chill. Yeah, so this kind of thing is that helping you to turn around, like, in the switch your positioning, like, uh, we are now in a different culture, we need to be adapt in a global citizen, okay? So, words for newcomer. Uh, first thing I want to say is to explore and be curious about uh, everything, know the unknown. I feel like after, uh, before, uh, how to say, before like joining the society, like everyone is like in the Asian education system, everyone is following the same path, going to uh, top university, uh, pursuing the, 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 maybe the good job and also the good salary, this kind of thing. But here, because everyone is working, right? So you know your own goal, everyone is different. So you need to know that why you are here, what kind of things you want to pursue in your life. That's the most important. And um, leverage your resources. Like I just mentioned, uh, leaders don't need to be the best one, but you know how to utilize your resources and leverage it. Okay. So here is like uh, IMBA is like Baozhang, uh, Baozhang San. And you need to know that how to re utilize the resources, maximize it. And okay, the third one I say, uh, <clears throat> don't take things for granted. I feel like um, every one of us, we have the, this kind of privilege to join the, maybe one of the toughest uh, MBA program here. Um, you have like very high educated uh, kind, kind of privilege opportunity. So we need to be grateful, right? So once you have the resources, remember to return back. Yeah. So. Um, that's something that uh, I want to mention. Also, um, I mentioned about the rich alumni network. Sometimes people are like, um, like they want to connect with alumni to have, oh, do you have like some job referral or kind of things? But I want to remind, like, uh, this is kind of mutual things. It's not because we are we are free, we just be here. It's because we really uh, agree with what we learned here, so uh, we want to uh, contribute back. So each alumni, we have the association, but we come together not just because we want to earn money or something, because we, we really think that here we help us to become who uh, we are now, so we want to pay back. So be careful that when you connect with alumni, uh, remember to be polite and also share that the, uh, what you can contribute. It's a give and, give and take mutual things, okay? <clears throat> okay, the last one I want to say is know how to utilize AI and or you will be replaced. And um, define your own success, not by others. Sorry. I think this is the previous slide. I didn't like update the one. But actually, uh, I want to mention why I say know how to utilize AI because the slides I use actually is generated by AI. And it's amazing that you just need to type the topic and then the template and also the conclusion, it will come for you. So actually I put my last slide as a 
uh, AI generate conclusion. And it sounds like he even like enter IMBA. Like he <laughs> say like uh, balancing your time, collect with the, your peers, that kind of uh, things. But I, I just want to say this is the digitalized uh, world, and world are becoming the fast pass uh, ever. And you really know how to utilize new technology, not just by uh, controlling by the AI. Okay, so. Yeah, thank you for having me here. And if you have more uh, questions, uh, happy to share, and we can change the LinkedIn profile afterwards. Okay, thank you.